here with my biggie it's all good mug yet again i um got up this morning oh i rinsed my face uh because as you'll recall from yesterday's vlog i did the derma e overnight peel last night i enjoyed doing that it's just a leave-on alpha hydroxy acid basically moisturizer but they instruct you to rinse it off the following morning to just kind of reduce irritation from it. But every time I do it, my skin feels like nice and smooth for the following day. Alpha hydroxy acids, they just help to kind of exfoliate dry patches. They also can help lift up some sun damaged skin cells and they also hydrate the skin. Um, so they're really good ingredients can sting a little bit, but generally very well tolerated. And they're particularly good for people who have the dry skin condition, keratosis pilaris, by softening those little rough, bumpy spots. And this particular product by Derma E, I'll list it down below. I really like, it's pretty gentle, it's fragrance free and, and pretty affordable. And you can do it a few times a week and it can really just kind of help smooth out those, that rough and bumpy skin you know keratosis pilaris it's a chronic skin condition so you have to be aware of things that worsen it and bring it out dry climates uh, cleansing with harsh cleansers or over cleansing can really aggravate the skin barrier and flare the kp whether it be on your face or on your body like your arms your thighs wherever it can really happen it can really lo be located anywhere um, yeah, I mean, you kind of have to stay on top of those things as well. Like, you can't just expect to start using an alpha hydroxy acid moisturizer or product and it's just that that's it. Uh, you, you still have to stay on top of, stay on top of moisturizing your skin and not letting it get too dry. Yeah, KP is really frustrating and there are, for cosmetic reasons, you can also, some, some people will pursue uh, laser treatment. You can, uh, there, use like pulse dye laser to treat the redness um and that actually is, you know some people get good success with that but <clears throat> it's it's a chronic condition you you really just have to be aware of it. environmental triggers and any products in your skincare routine that are overly drying can aggravate it kp can be really frustrating another tip though as i've said in numerous videos but it really helps kp a lot too is like after you get out of the shower or after you wash your face while your skin is still damp definitely put moisturizer on at that point it really helps hold hydration into the skin including around those little hair follicles where the kp arises um, so that's really important even when everything is cool calm just fine you still want to do that as maintenance but in terms of the rough and bumpy stuff Alpha hydroxy acids are probably your best bet or poly hydroxy acids if you're really sensitive they tend to be a little even gentler than alpha hydroxy acids but um, alpha hydroxy acids are, are best for dry skin conditions like like KP whereas salicylic acid is more for oily skin conditions however salicylic acid can help KP as well that's why CeraVe's rough and bumpy line the rough and bumpy is that what they call it anyways those products all have salicylic acid in them um so yeah that's what's going on as you saw this morning um or early afternoon i my poor mask cane i got a pot for it as i told you guys but i did not have enough soil and so it was sort of suffering for a few days with inadequate root coverage i think I ordered some Miracle Grow on iHerb, not iHerb, on Amazon. But it's like this particular type of potting soil where you add the water and it just like expands. And I think that's going to make the tree a lot, trees, tree, the mass cane, whatever, a lot happier because the soil is, is more hydrated and their roots are nice and covered. They have, and the nice thing about a pot is that it drains well. I think they'll be happy. Yeah, I kind of got a little dirty, but washed my hands. I mean, potting soil is clean. It just appears dirty, but uh, I thought for fun, I would try baking some almond flour blondies. I found a recipe I want to try out, so I thought that would be fun to make today since I have all that almond flour I just had to have from Costco. Um, I'm kind of in the mood to bake, so I thought we would do that today. But before I get started on that, I wanted to update you guys. I tried the um, Lacanto granola last night and I rather enjoy it. 
It has coconut, sunflower seeds, monk fruit sweetener, almonds, coconut oil, tapioca fiber, chia seeds, cinnamon, sea salt, natural vanilla flavor, and rosemary extract. Um, it overwhelmingly tastes like coconut, so if you do not like coconut, don't waste your time with this. You will be, you will be disappointed. Or if you're allergic to coconut or any seed nut, I think this would not be wise to try. But yeah, I really like it. It's a little greasy, um, but otherwise, it's good. You know how things that are... It has a nice vanilla smell to it. I think I'll transfer this to a pretty jar. That way I can get rid of the bag. Now, let's see, I wonder, I'm not the best at approximating sizes, but I think putting it in my little owl jar, this looks pretty. Are you guys having a good fall? I, I say that as though it, as though it's all turning leaves and maple syrup gushing out of trees here. It's not. I talk about fall like it's a real thing here, but we can pretend that it is. There's no, no turning leaves or anything like that. But isn't he cute? All right, so this recipe calls for two cups of the almond flour, and then they put in parentheses 224 grams. I'm actually going to weigh it out. I have a little um, food scale here. I'm actually going to weigh it out because I feel as though with um, almond flour, it's better to weigh it out rather than measuring it just because I've heard that. Uh, you get a more accurate consistency. area. All right, 220. That is about two cups. And it calls for 14 grams or two tablespoons of coconut flour, which I have here. The Now Foods brand. Mm, I love the smell of coconut flour. <laughs> smells so good. Alright, and then calls for a third of a cup of sugar. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do Lacanto. teaspoon of baking powder. Right, so as to whisk everything together so there are no clumps. All right, and then it calls for just a quarter of a cup of water. It's coming together. All right, she says to line it with a parchment with parchment paper, but I don't have any parchment paper. What do I look like, Julia Child here? No. <laughs> so I'm just gonna spray my pan with a little amount of nonstick. All right, I'm gonna put it in the oven for, I think it said 20 minutes, and then let it cool. I'm gonna add a little bit, a little smidge here of dough left. Leave no, no dough, no dough, no dough left behind. 
All right, I put it in the oven for 21 minutes. All right, so they came out of the oven and I don't know, the edges browned up, but I'm looking a little pale. Um, and I have them here completely cooled. That's always a good sign when the knife comes out clean. <laughs> They're thin. I think if you like a traditional blondie, I think you would want a little bit thicker. All right, so for the most part, they stay together. Given how few ingredients there were. All right, let's give it a taste. First of all, not a blondie. Tastes like almond flour, but you don't really taste the coconut and it's a little grainy. these again but this particular recipe might be good as like a crust if you had some kind of filling you know like a custard or something that you wanted to put on top that might be good I would put if I do this again I would put I don't know some kind of a flavoring like orange orange flavor or something in it because it's just really bland. It is sweet. Um, so I do think that the monk fruit was a good choice. I will obviously eat all of those, <laughs> but I don't think I would make those again. It's a shame. I made another one of this blogger's recipes though um, a while ago. I made cookies with coconut flour. Uh, they were like chocolate chip banana cookies, and those were really good. I highly recommend those. I, I'll put the blog down below. I give it a three out of five. Three because it's very very few ingredients. So I think if you had these on hand and you wanted something that you could throw together really quickly to satisfy like a sweet, you know, you wanted something sweet, like a dessert, really, really simple. But I think if you were gonna take these to a party that people would be like, what the heck is this? Um, I think they need a little bit of a, like, I think they need to be spiced up a notch. Cinnamon would be good in this, perhaps, something. It just needs something, they're a little, Mealy. Mealy is a good word for them. I give them a three out of five though because the ingredients are so like very few ingredients and it came together really quickly and it held up. So I give I give three points for that. Um that it held together because it that makes that makes it a recipe that has a lot of potential to improve upon. One thing I completely ignored in the recipe and maybe it makes all the difference, but I don't know is a pinch of salt. I didn't add that. The other thing though in the blog post that I do think would make this a four out of five is she shows it drizzled with chocolate. Like you could take some baking chips and melt them down and drizzle it on over top. I think that would, I think that would take this up to at least a three and a half because you would have the chocolate and then the base is not, although it's a little mealy, the base has potential. So I think the chocolate drizzle would probably take this to at least a three and a half 
um, out of five or four even. Here in Marshalls, they have these cute Halloween PJs. They're really soft. Oh, they're Snoopy. Snoopy Halloween robe. Look how cute this Halloween gnome is. Oh, I love him. His little jack o' lantern. They're cute too. Boy, Marshall's really has a lot on a lot of gnomes. He's cute. Yeah, his room. This is handy, this little rotating cosmetic organizer. Pink Space Brand. Happens to be next to this adorable sugar bowl. Oh look, Dash has a pumpkin waffle maker. I have a Dash waffle maker, but I never use it. One of these mini ones. Mine doesn't have a pumpkin on it, but somehow, I don't think the pumpkin shape would entice me to use it more. Carrot snack and dip. It doesn't look like it would hold very many carrots, but it's cute. Avocado pod. Oh, this is brilliant. Stretch to cover and store the other half of the avocado. Ooh, fridge bin liners. It's also a good thing. I never thought I needed fridge bin liners, but Marshalls can convince me that I do. Uh, Ray Dunn jewelry box. It's nice. This is the stackable collection. Got a little toolbox. Kind of a paltry candle selection compared to normal. The DW home candles are always really good. So Marshall's had some cute stuff. I found a pair of jeans that I was really excited about, but you can't try anything on because the dressing rooms are closed. And jeans, I feel like I I'm so picky when it comes to jeans. I have to try them on. So I didn't, I didn't go for it, but it's a shame. I, I don't know. I always feel like I need jeans because they look nice, but I don't enjoy wearing them. And I end up never wearing them. Uh, they're just not comfortable to me. Like the fabrics are like really rough. So I don't know, but I do need a new pair of jeans. I'm always on the lookout for recommend recommend a good pair of jeans for me you guys uh, like a good brand or cut or something um, that's like not not exorbitantly priced I don't like I don't like the all like so many jeans now have um, distressing aka holes I don't like that I mean I don't, I don't know I just I want the jeans to be clean looking you know just uniform I'm boring um, I don't like distressing or like anything jazzy I just feel like that goes in and out of style and then the jeans are useless and another great rebounder workout in the books I just finished up and I have really been loving doing I think I mentioned this earlier doing weights on the rebounder um, I like like changing up my uh, footing to kind of balance out the weight. I don't know how to describe what, I'm, what I do. But. Yeah, I highly recommend leaps and rebounds. I bought this on Amazon a while ago, but I have, I mentioned this in a vlog a while ago, the company actually reached out to me and gave me a discount code for you guys. If you want to get one, I think you can get like 10% off. Um, I'll put it down below in the description box. It's not like, this isn't sponsored or anything, but yeah, I highly recommend this one if you're in the market, but bear in mind, I've never, I've never used any other one, but it came very quickly and it was really easy to assemble. So I'm about to get in the shower and I'm gonna take my mascara and sunscreen off. I put on today, as far as sunscreen, like two layers of the Altruist throughout the day and one layer of the Kylie Skin SPF. I actually like that. 
uh, the face one. Anyways, um, but my mascara, I've been getting a lot of questions about what mascara I'm wearing. I'm still, I'm trying to finish this up. I personally do not like it. It's uh, Urban Decay's Lash Freak. Um, I talked about this in is it my July, fa yeah, July favorites. I just, it's really goopy and as I've used it, it's gotten goopier and goopier and I don't know, it goes on really crusty and I think it kind of makes my eyelid twitch because the mascara is so heavy. But um, yeah, a lot of people comment that they like the way it looks, um, but I don't know, I, I would not, this was sent to me as a PR gift, but I would not buy it myself. And how I got on Urban Decay's PR list, I do not know. Anyways, I'm just using my Neutrogena body oil as my first step cleanser, and then um, when I get in the shower, I'll wash it off with um, the CeraVe, Hi CeraVe Hydrating no, sorry, the CeraVe Foaming Face Wash. But this works really well as an oil cleanser. I mean, you see how it just breaks up the mascara and it removes the film, it breaks up the film of, in my case, water resistant sunscreen. But if you have cosmetics on, it, it dissolves the, the film of that and lifts it up out of the like crevices of your skin. Um, it, you know, it, it'll, it's, oil slip um, between skin cells and help kind of lift out that gunk. And then you come in with a second step, the, the cleanser. Um, this is a good one actually, this uh, Skin Fix Barrier Foaming Oil Cleanser. You come in with a second step to actually then remove the oil and broken up cosmetics and dirt and stuff that you know has been lifted up kind of out of, out of your skin and needs to then be rinsed off the surface of the skin. So I just wanted to show that to you, but when I, I, I get in the shower and I do the second step, so I'm not going to show you that. And voila, <laughs> just like that. See, all, all off. Now, if I did not use the second cleanser, I would have like little black, black marks of mascara flex, like right here, kind of smear it on my cheeks because I've forgotten the second step before. And that's why it's important to do both steps. But if I just did the second step, if I just used a gentle cleanser, I would have raccoon eyes underneath, underneath, my, underneath my eyes. So it's a combination of the oil to dissolve everything from all the cracks and crevices, nooks and crannies, and the second step cleanser. Anyways, let me, let me put on my Tom Revolution. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys because I do get questions about it and you all are asking what mascara I've been wearing. It's Lash Freak. <laughs> She's super freaky. Super freak. Super freak. Anyways, <laughs> I think I'm going to wrap up the vlog here. I hope you guys enjoyed it and thank you all for coming along. I hope you guys had a great weekend. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.